All right, so in this video, we will get started with something called error handling. Error handling. So basically, we'll be handling the errors and the error messages that come along with running the script. So the main concept is that we don't want to depend on the QTP results. Let's pull up the results sheet. So this is the QTP results sheet, the results viewer. So we don't want to depend on the QTP results because in a realistic situation, in a realistic way, nobody is going to open up each and every single result sheet for your scripts and look at it. So we have to handle the errors and we have to pass some pass fail results back into an external Excel sheet or a text file so we can take full control of the errors that come up. So in QTP, there are a few ways of handling the errors. So you've probably noticed that when there is an error in the script, the script stops, right? So we have to click on stop and everything. So we don't even want that. What we want is for the script to continue running, even if there is an error. So we can actually control that from this scripting interface. So we can write a line, which is something like this. On error, resume next. So this can be your first line of code for handling the errors. So on error, resume next. What that does is it basically, even if there is an error within the script, the script will continue to run. And because the reason we want that, the reason we want it to continue is if we have 50 scripts running one by one by one in a big batch, and if one of them fails, then we don't want the whole QTP to freeze and wait for us to click on stop, right? So we want the scripts to continue running on their own. So on error, resume next. So from now on, whenever whenever the script the script will never stop even when there is an error within the script okay now the way to handle the error one way to code it is this at the end of the script at the very end of the script we can write something like this this is a very basic way of handling errors very basic way from the scripting perspective okay so we can say, later on we can say, um, later on we'll be using this error handling codes within the functions itself. Instead of having, uh, having error handling or one error handling at the end of the script. So for now, we'll do that though. So we'll say, we'll use an if then conditional statement. If, if err.number, so what err.number means, every Every error in QTP has an error number, okay? So if the browser is not found, if the page is not found, if a button cannot be found, if the function library is not added, every one of these add errors has its own specific error number. So if there is no error, if there is no error within the script, then the error number of QTP is zero. So I'll repeat it. I'll say, hold on. Let's open Notepad. So by default, QTP error number is zero. So by, de by default, it is zero, which means it will always stay zero unless there is an error within the script. So we want to figure out, we want the script to run and if there is any error within the script, if there is any error within the script, then we want to print something, or we want to write something back to the Excel sheet, or we want to do something that will notify us that there was an error within the script. So how will we know that there was an error? If the error number goes to something else from zero, okay? 
So if the arrow number is not zero anymore, after it runs, after it runs all of these lines of code, then if error number is not zero anymore, then that means there was an error within the script, right? So we can say if error.number is not equal, and this is how you write not equal in VBScript, if error number, error.number is not equal to zero, then print pass no error. Else, so that means if the error number is equal to zero, oh, I'm sorry, uh, it should be if the error number is not equal to zero, then print fail. Print fail error occurred. Else, else if the error number is equal to zero, then print pass no error. So this will give us a better control of the handling of issues in the pass and the fail and the errors, right? So let's try to run this and see what happens, okay? Open the browser, calculator.net. Looks like there are some errors because we're basically using a different sheet of data, but we did not update our variables. So we saw that this this 300,000 was entered, but we did not see the loan term amount. So here we go. The script did not stop. This is a very good example of getting an error. So we had an error, but the script did not stop. It did not stop running, right? Instead, at the end of the script, this line, this line gave us a print log saying that printed a fail, error occurred. So there was an error somewhere within the script, right? So we definitely know what this error was because when we talked about this loan term, it's trying to get the loan term from the global sheet. So in this case, we don't have any global sheet anymore because we're using a different function. We're not using we're not importing this Excel sheet into our QTP global sheet anymore, right? We're basically importing directly, directly importing this sheet into our QTP data table, right? So we're not importing into the global sheet, we're importing to a different sheet, which is the data import sheet that we created and imported here, right? So we have to change the variable the value of our variables, okay? So now, before we correct the steps, before we change the steps so that we can have the script running fine again, let's try to understand that that the benefit of using the benefit of using this to handle the error. So, I understand that the script did not stop running. It ran all the way through and it gave me that there was an error. But just just telling me that there was an error, just telling me or saying that that is not enough, right? So we have to understand what was the error and in what step. Just knowing there was an error is not as helpful as knowing what the error is. So we want an error description or an error number, okay? Right? So we can write another line with this that will give us the actual error description, okay? So within this print, if there was an error, it will print fail and, and err description, err.description. So this will also print the description, but we cannot just write this right after this quotation. We have to put the ampersand and sign also. So it'll print this. This is how you do it in BB scripting. It'll print something in a quotation. 
And if you want to add another string or another value, then you have to put an ampersand and then you put err.description. As you can see, err.description is a built-in function in QTP. Okay, so let's run this again and see if, let's close this out and let's see if this gives us the error description as well. It's trying to enter those values and it did not actually enter anything, but it did click on calculate. So we'll wait for some time. We'll wait till the run finishes because there was an error. There were multiple errors, so it'll take some time. And it did close the browser. Okay. Now, if we go to the print log, now we can see that it printed fail. It also printed cannot identify the object, web table of class, verification, etc., 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 within the application. So it did not find the the web table object okay so that should be somewhere around there this so does it mean that it did identify all the web edit boxes no so we'll always get the last error the last error that it finds it will give us the error description of the last error only Okay, so in the next video, let's continue writing some results back to our Excel sheet instead of just, instead of using the print commands.